Hello, I'm Jackie. And I'm Camille. Welcome, Welcome to, to Two Studios, Studios Art, Art Channel. Channel. Hit like and subscribe to get our free demos and tutorials right to your inbox. Happy painting! Hello everyone, I'm Jackie from Two Studios Art and today I'm going to show you how I use cut out shapes from a wine magazine to compose an acrylic painting on a wine theme. This is a free magazine you can pick up at your wine store and it has pictures of wine bottles and glasses. Very convenient for us to use to compose a painting. Now many artists throughout the ages have used cut out shapes to compose a painting. It allows you to move the shapes around until you get something that you like, something that you're comfortable with. I find this bottle a little bit too large, so let's try something else. By using cut out shapes, you can move them around your canvas. Today, actually, I'm working on a canvas panel, and I'm going to just move my shapes around so that I find a composition that, that I like. Everybody's sense of composition is different. So just move things around until, until it's something that you think you would like, would be comfortable with. Kind of move things around until they feel right to me. And again, we're all different. Okay, so I've got a bottle of wine there, a glass. I've got a smaller glass and a smaller bottle, which suggests that they're further back on the surface that they're standing on. All right, I think that's a good composition. I might move this over just a little bit. It's whatever feels right to you. And don't forget, we all have different sensitivities when it comes to composition. Okay, now then I'll quickly trace around the shapes. This is just a little tool for you to help you with composition. Now often, of course, we just draw from life. We look and we draw from life. And that's fine too. But this is a little shortcut allowing us to speed up the process, to get to the fun part, the painting part. There we go. All right, just a quick trace. If it's a bit wiggly, that's fine too. It doesn't matter. It's just to get us started with a composition that we like. I'm going to paint the outline in a minute. So this is just a rough, Rough sketch. There we go. I've got a rough sketch of that bottle, a rough sketch of that glass. It had white wine in it, but I'm thinking I'm going to put red wine in that glass. I'm not sure. I just have a have a look in a minute. And this one had white wine in it. It's kind of hiding behind the bottle there, and it had a little bit of. There we go. Okay, so now I've got my general composition and I can get started painting. The fun part. Today I'm using Opus Essential Acrylic Colors. I've got Titanium White, Cadmium Yellow Light, Cadmium Yellow Medium, Cadmium Orange, Cadmium Red Light, Primary Red, Quinacridone Magenta, Ultramarine Blue, permanent violet, and black. So I'm going to take, today I'm going to be washing my brushes in between each color and drying them slightly with my paper towel. I'm going to use orange to quickly sketch in because orange or yellow ochre are good colors to just quickly sketch in because they're easy to paint over. So I'm just, this, I, I'm doing this so that I can see the general shape of everything before I actually get started painting. This will help me see it rather than the pencil sketches. 
doesn't have to be exact. We're going to be covering over all this too with paint. Yellow ochre, as I said, is also a good color for sketching in. If you don't have yellow ochre, it's easy to mix up with a little bit of cadmium yellow medium and a tiny bit of purple. But I'll just use the orange right now. There, now I think I'm going to try and get in the, the table. Not too much in the middle. Let's see if I... It's just a... Just give me a little guideline of, of where the table would be. All right. Now the next thing for us to decide is where is the light coming from? Because this is going to have a huge effect on where we put our shadows. So I'm going to say for my painting, you can decide for yours, that my light is coming from this side. That means the shadows will be cast over here. So very quickly, I'm going to take some of my purple, mix it with a little bit of the white, and just very quickly put in some shadows. And my light's coming from this direction. So the shadows will be coming from that direction. Later on, I'll add some more color to my shadows, but right now I just want to get, get the shadows blocked in, as it were. There, get the shadows blocked in. We'll change the color a little bit later, but this will let you know where you're going with your painting. And the shadows will help to ground, ground your objects. As soon as you've got some shadows in there, your objects feel much more grounded. So they're there. They're much more grounded. Now I can start on my main items, which are the bottles. Now you might notice that I haven't got any green on my palette. And that's because there are so many greens in the world. If you look outside at the bushes, if you look out at the trees, you'll see there are no two greens the same. That's why I don't usually buy green. I mix it. Now today I want an earthy green, so I'm going to mix my cadmium yellow medium with my ultramarine blue. And the ultramarine blue has a little bit of, a little bit of red in it like phthalo blue so it's going to give me a really earthy green so, so I'm going to start right in on the bottle with an earthy green. Later on I'll be putting in some uh, some highlights for where the, the lighter part of the bottle is but right now I just want to block it in so we can get started. This is the fun part of painting, actually painting. Once we've decided on where the light's coming from we can just Go to town and have a great time. Okay, so that's one bottle blocked in, and then I'll just block this little bottle in too. So this little bottle is just a bit further away from the other one. There we go. There. There we go. Okay, we'll get more of the details in in a little bit. Now I'm going to imagine that in this glass there's something like Vino Verde, which is a Portuguese wine that's it's not really green, but it has a green, a little green, greenish tint to it. So I'm just going to put that in there and a little bit lighter on the top. The surface of the wine is usually a little bit lighter. There we go. I'm not too, too fussy about details. That's fine. Okay, now I'm going to put in some lovely looking red wine in here with my cadmium red light and my primary red. You notice I'm going a little bit darker on the shadier side because the light's coming from this side. So later on we can do the highlights on the glass. 
open that up there. Makes it a little bit rickety, but don't worry about it. We'll sort it, we'll get some white on top. Now, the, as I said before with this bottle, on the surface of the, the glass, uh, sorry, not the glass, on the surface of the wine, it's usually reflecting a lighter color. Next time you have a glass of wine, just see if you can see that. Now, the next thing we're going to do is, I'm going to pretend that this is a, a red shrink cap on this bottle. This is my shady side. There we go. And the same on here, the cadmium on this side, the light side. And I'll do a little bit of quinacridone magenta on this side. There we go. There. I think I'm going to do a touch of orange on there. I don't want to get too fussy right now. We'll get into all the details after. Right, now um, as I said, I'll be constantly just maybe adding a few colors here, there, and everywhere into the, the shadow bits. But just for now, that's a good start. Now, I'm going to decide that this painting, by the way, the brush I just used, this brush here is called a filbert. It's a number 16. And a filbert is a rounded brush. If you use it flat, you get a wide line. If you use it on the end, you get a narrower line. So this is a very useful brush. This too is a useful brush. This is a one inch angled shader brush. And I'm gonna use it to put in the background. Now, my light was coming from this side. So I'm gonna have a very warm background because I'm gonna think that this will be a nice painting to put up in a little, say you have a little bar, cart in your house or a little place where you keep your wine. I think this would be a nice painting to hang on a cold rainy fall night or winter night and uh, so that's why I'd like to put a warm background in. So I'm going to start off with my cadmium orange on my light side. And the cadmium orange to make it run really nice and warm and into that I'm going to mix a little bit of cadmium red light. Makes that very, very warm. Later on, I'll do a highlight on the side of the bottle so it doesn't blend in too much with the background color. There we go. Okay, so that's our warm background color. And as, as it flows across, it's going to be a little bit deeper color. So add maybe bit of yellow in there too. Put some of that light on that side. And as you can see with an angled shader brush, you can cover quite a bit of area quite quickly. There we go. It's a lovely warm color. Okay. Now when you have a glass of something, through the glass, you can see the background color. There will be reflections, but you'll see the background color coming through too. So I'm just gonna put a little bit of white in there just to demark it from the actual background. And the white highlights that we'll do later on also will show that. Now, as I said, my color is now going to start getting deeper and deeper. So I'm putting in some primary red wet my brush a little bit there and it's getting deeper as it moves across into the so-called shadows of the room lighter moving to darker just being very rough and tumble here now I'm going to add in some quinacridone magenta quite deep on this side of the color and blending it in quickly. I find I like to work fairly fast because even if I make a mistake and decide later on, I, oh, I'm going to change that. Um, I have a little bit of purple in there too. But even if I 
change it, and you can with acrylics. That's the beauty of acrylics. I find that it's better to work fast and fresh. Fast and fresh. I'll have to get some highlights onto that bottle because it's disappearing. There we go. Okay. I'm even going to add a little bit of blue to darken it even a little bit more and just quickly blend it in. Oops, went over the bubble stem. That's all right, because I have to rework that anyway. And I can decide later if I need more sh shading on that side. Every painting you do is different. So, And by the way, all of our paintings are going to be different because we're different people. All right, now I'm going to decide... Oops. You know, I have to blend this in a bit more on this side. It's just too much of a line there. That's why I love painting. It's an interactive. You're interacting with yourself as much as with anybody else, too. Now, I'm going to quickly put high, highlight the edge of that bottle again because it's just completely disappeared there. Completely disappeared. Highlight this one. All right, now before I go too much further, I want to add in a label, which we will change the color of later, but just, just block in those, those labels. Just quickly block them in there. Now I want to decide on the color of my table. I've got orange, reds, I've got some purples that I'll deepen. I'm going to ha do highlights on the bottles in a little bit. I think I'm going to do a kind of a creamy yellow table. So I'm going to start on this side very light. And then as we go across the painting, I'm going to deepen it a little bit. We add a little bit of orange in there. That might have been too much. Yeah, that's too orange. So I'm just going to clean my brush again in the water and get back. I'll do cadmium yellow and white. That will be a, a more gentle shading to it. Okay. There we go. There we go. I like that so much. I'm actually right now going to do a highlight on this bottle. There we go. And while we're at it, do a highlight on this bottle. There. Painting's an interactive thing. You see something, you try something, and you like it, or you want to make a change. And as I said before, everybody's painting is going to be different even if you start off with the same traced objects because we're individuals it's all going to be different that's what makes us unique i never i never cease to be amazed at the unique quality of everybody's approach to art it's fabulous now I'm going to go into this little bit over here, and it's going to be a little deeper color. I could even go a little bit darker than this one, too, because it's the shadier side. All right. I'm going to just fool around a little bit with the shape of this stem. There. Add a bit of color into here, too. There's always reflective colors around. All right. So now I've got a light reflection on this bottle and a light reflection on that bottle. I want a deeper color on the bottles. So I'm going to go into my ultramarine blue and I'm going to add some white to it. Not a lot, just a tiny bit of white, which shows 
make it closer to a periwinkle blue. And I'm just going to shade the whole thing. That might be too light, I am not sure. Mm, it's a little too light. I'll blend it in in a minute. No, that's good in here too. Yeah, that's a little too light, so I'm going to go dark. I'll be blending that in. That's a little bit too, 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 too blue. But I'm going to blend it in. I'm going to wet my brush and blend in. Although I kind of like the effect. I do kind of like that effect. I'm just going to blend it in a little bit with a wet brush. Soften it a bit. Yeah, I don't mind that at all, actually. Might be a little fauve, fauvist. The fauves were artists who loved, loved bright colors. Okay, I'm going to go back into my violet now and get a bit more into my shadow there. Just a bit more violet. It's an interactive process. I've got, got a bit of yellow in there. Didn't wash my brush, but that's okay. Sometimes you get some happy surprises doing that. Nope, don't like that. I'm going to wet my brush. Take a little bit of that off. I mean, it's not bad, that purple in with the white wine, but it's not quite right either. There we go. All right, now I want to do a few little touch-ups. I want to get back into here with some lighter colors. And I want to lighten up that pink in the... I want to lighten up the pink at the top of this wine before we start in on the, the highlights. I'm just going to lighten it up white. There we go. Oops, brush is too wet. It's a good thing to dry your brush a little bit in between. Okay. I'm going to do, I'm going to make a, a kind of a creamy white. Just putting a tiny, tiny bit of yellow in there. So it's just a little bit of a creamy white. Actually, I've got some pink on my brush too, so let's get rid of that. And then we're going to start on some highlights. The shinier the object, the more it will reflect light. And glass is very shiny. I'm just going to get back into that white a little bit. Yeah, I've still got some red on my brush. I can get, get it a bit cleaner there so you can get some better highlights. Okay, so we'll go back into the white. I can still see I've got a little bit of color on my brush. So let me just see if I can clean it a little bit better. Look at my tiny, tiny bit of yellow. The white, I'm trying to get a, a cream. Yes, that's right. So the shinier the object, the more light it will reflect. Just little reflections here, there. If you look at glass, it doesn't reflect evenly because it will pick up, like if there's a window, it will pick up the window shape. So you'll see all kinds of interesting reflections in glass. It picks up uh, the colors around too. So, so if there's a yellow table, it will pick up some yellow. Okay. 
all kinds of colors will get picked up by the glass. Oops, Just a little bit of green got in there. That's okay. Sometimes you have very happy accidents and you see wonderful colors where you weren't expecting them. I quite like that blue there, actually. That was a surprise. All right, now, there's just a few more details to do. The other thing I wanted to point out is that the very bottom of almost every object, depending on the light, of course, there's a very deep shadow. So I'm going to mix black with a little bit of the purple and put a very deep shadow right at the bottom of my objects. If you start looking around, you'll see that there's a deep, thin, thin, thin shadow at the bottom of things. All right, now I'm gonna add a little bit of I just see something else that I should do here. Get a little on the rim of the glass there. It has to get in there. There we go. I'm going to add another little reflection or two in here. There we go. Now I'm going to, I feel that there should be some red reflecting on this stem. So I'm just going to get some in there. Don't forget, these are this is your painting. You can do what you like with it. Whatever feels good to you, you can do. And if you don't like it, hey, it's acrylic. We can erase it. Like this little mark here. That was an accident. I'm going to take it out. All right, so now I'm going to do some writing. Just for the fun of it. just for the fun of it. Make it into a warm, cozy, wine-themed acrylic painting. Vino Rosso. And on this, we said it was a Portuguese wine. So I'm going to call it Vino Verde, and I'm going to put it in a, an orangey red. Vino Verde. Put a little bit of red in this top part here too. Now I've got to be careful not to fuss too much but that's what happens sometimes. I get carried away and overdo it. Does that ever happen to you when you're painting? You think I should have stopped a while back. Now I'm going to put a reflection in here. That that you did in yellow that's a reflection from the I'm going to put a reflection in here too, and here, and in there too. I might add a titchy bit of this periwinkle blue, if I can get it right, not too dark. There we go. A little bit of periwinkle blue. We'll put some on there too. Okay. Ooh, one more thing. I think I need a little bit of a definition at the top of the table. So I'm going to take that same periwinkle blue and put a little bit of a, just a titchy bit of a line there, a little tiny suggestion of a, of a line there. All right. Now, let me just recap what I've done here. This is a painting 
that you could do at home. First, I started out with the bottle shapes, which we traced. Then I used the orange to do the outline of the, the shape. And then we mixed up some green with the tanny yellow medium and the ultramarine blue, and we made an earthy green for the bottles. Then we did highlights. We added the color of the wines, the reds mixed, the yellows mixed. I'm going to add a little bit of darker on this side here. Then we did the tables. We did the, sorry, we did the, the background color. We had it going where the light's coming from, light to, to darker. Of course, before that, we had put in the shadows. That was one of the first things we did. After we sketched it in, we said, where is the light coming from? We did the shadows. Then we started in on the bottles. And then we started refining it a little bit by adding the labels. The, the words, the highlights on the glasses. So I'm going to just do one more thing. This is the thing. Every time you see something, you think, oh, I think I know something I'd like to put in there. And basically that's it. We've got a 12 by 9 canvas panel. We've sketched in our bottles. We've had fun with the colors. You can go really wild with the colors or you can do more realistic. It's up to you. It's your painting. Have fun painting, everybody. And please go to Two Studios Art, like us, subscribe, and then you'll see all our videos. They'll come in right into your inbox. Have fun painting, everyone. See you next time. Bye.